All right, all right, all right. Uh, hello, everyone. I am here to do a review on leather gloves. I don't think this video um, is for uh, seasoned practitioners in HEMA. I think this is more for uh, people who are new, people who have questions about what gloves do I need and when do I need them. Do I need leather gloves? Like, what is the point? Do I need heavy gloves? Are leather gloves considered heavy? I think it's for that type of person. So um, I hope this video will be helpful to at least someone out there because there aren't too many videos out there on leather gloves and probably rightfully so. So I think the first question is, uh, for a person who's new to HEMA, when do I need leather gloves? Why do I need leather gloves? Shouldn't I just buy like a real heavy set of like Spence heavies or five finger sparring gloves or, or uh, anything from name and fencing? Why would I even buy these? Well, when you're generally practicing, you probably don't want to be wearing your heavy gloves. When you're practicing and you're not going full speed and you're practicing techniques, um, having a lighter set of gloves is for long sword, side sword, rapier is generally the way to go. Now, do you need something like this, which is kind of like a, I don't even remember the price of these, but like a $50 glove? No, you don't. You can go to like any store that sells any sort of glove. They don't have to be leather. You can wear baseball gloves. You can wear, you can wear uh, workout gloves. You can wear working gloves from like, um, from a Home Depot, um, sort of home hardware type store. You can wear anything. Anything that makes your hand a little bit more comfortable while you're practicing and maybe protects your hand a little bit from scuffs here and there. That's all you need for practice. You don't really need to step up to anything else. Now, if you are planning on doing a little bit more vigorous practice um, and you want something that's gonna keep your hands not protected against really hard blows because that's not what these are for, but something that will protect you against a lot of hard abrasions. Maybe you're doing a lot of binding of the weapon and, and disarms. That's where you might want to step up to a little bit of a heavier leather glove, unless you just want to buy them for the pure fact that they look awesome and they, you feel a little bit more badass when you're wearing them, right? So I've had these for about four to five years. Um, they have a little bit more padding on top, but outside of that, they are kind of still just a leather glove. They were relatively cheap. I'll say relative is, is the word. Um, I think they were somewhere between $40 and $60 Canadian. I, got a, um, I bought them for my school, so I got like a student discount on them. But nevertheless, I've used these for a long time. Durability-wise for me, they've been great, but take that with a grain of salt because I'm very light on gloves. I've got a little bit of wear here from my pommel of my longsword. Um, but I tend to wrap most of everything I have in hockey tape over top of like the threads and whatnot, which makes it a little bit smoother here so you get a little little bit less wear and tear. But these gloves would be a, a good example of my first gloves I ever wore, and I still have them to this day, for general practice and use. And I even use it in slow to medium speed sparring with people who I know won't crush my hands. And that's very important. But what I can recommend now are these Red Dragons. I just purchased these about a month and a half ago. They're a slight bit better than the gloves I just showed you, and I also know the name of them, so you can actually look these up. And price-wise, I think they're about the same, give or take shipping. Um, they've got softer padding, but it's thicker. So protection-wise, I think it's a slight tiny bit better. They've got a longer cuff. They also sell a shorter cuff, a, a version of them, which will also be a little bit cheaper too. It has more padding on the forearm, and it's also got padding here, which is just a bonus. These gloves, what made them very appealing from the beginning is when I bought them, they had zero break in time. It is very soft leather, very comfortable gloves, just right from the get go. Only downside of these is because it is a little bit of a thicker type padding, they're warmer. So now that it's becoming summer, these are becoming a bit too warm to wear. So I'm kind of going back to the other gloves, but I still think these are the best gloves for day to day use and for practice that I think I've owned. I highly recommend these Red Dragons for that sort of use. So the next glove I have are these Dohema gloves. I bought these on a whim. I thought these were going to be more medium duty and a more robust glove based upon the pictures. So you can't really tell until you, until you own a set of gloves. In fact, these gloves in some areas aren't even as protective as the Red Dragons were. They do have some hardened pieces on them, but anywhere else it's just actually a thin leather glove with no padding. And of course, where most of these hard pieces are, particularly if we're using side swords, is not where the weapons tend to hit. 
So these gloves, I don't even recommend them because you can get other gloves from Black Armory, which is where I bought these from, um, that are far better than these. Um, I believe these gloves may have gone back to the drawing board since I last purchased them. They had some flaws, like there's just loose threads all over the place. Like I, I, met, I do have a, a review of these gloves somewhere in my video list that you could check out. But just once again, just the placement of all these pieces don't make any sense. They could be far larger. And if they were far larger and they wrapped around the side of your hands and whatnot, this could become a really good glove. But it's just not. The forearm piece was also wonky as well. I bought them because I'm like, wow, these are great. They go really up, far up your forearm. But most of the places where you get hit has no padding. They put all the padding in the areas you don't get hit. Once again, not making much sense, if you can see there. One clever thing they did do is make it so that this part is stretchy, so if you have a thick coat on, you can put these on. But this Velcro was added by me. So that way, if you're not wearing something thick, you can cinch it up and it's tight to your forearm and it's not flopping around all over the place. But once again, I don't really recommend these gloves because for the protection level, you can just get the Red Dragons and other type of gloves. And if you want something better than these, you go with these. So these are brand new to me. I know a lot of people who have these gloves, uh, maybe uh, earlier versions of these gloves. These would be what I would consider a full medium duty leather glove. They're definitely not heavy duty. You can't use them for really heavy weapons, for, for heavy longsword sparring, or for pole arms or that sort of thing. Uh, they just aren't hard enough for that. But these will be a glove that you can use for definitely um, more vigorous sparring, somewhere into the medium level range of sparring. And I think personally, I won't recommend them for that until I use them for more. I'll be using these for side sword. I've ordered these with finger caps, which are super easy to take in and out for me at least. Um, I've modified mine, which I have a video once again in my list of me doing so. Um, they're also easy to put in, but that keep in mind I ordered these gloves uh, one size bigger just so they would have more room for all the tips. So I have tips going in all the fingers, so I've got good finger protection. These gloves have much thicker padding than any of those gloves I showed you, plus some rigid padding here. It still has flaws, meaning here, I'm just not sure why they put this break in. To me, that doesn't make any sense. They should just have that kept going. Why also it's not wrapped around to the side of the hand, which is about here, which is something you worry about with side sword hitting the side of your hand. So I'm gonna have to find a way to rectify that. Plus also the pinky, same thing, like this hard padding could be along the side of the pinky and it wouldn't make this finger too big and bulky. And then once again, that would protect the pinky from side blows. Now, the inner cap I have here goes, has a side piece that goes to about here. So most of the pinky is protected except for the upper part. Another flaw is here, they could have designed this part of the glove better to have more padding here as well. Outside of that, for a medium duty glove and what I'm gonna use it for, I think this is a really good glove relatively flexible. These are brand new. These ones do, unlike the other gloves, they will need a little bit of a break-in period, but it's not horrible. Good forearm protection, could use a bit more wrist protection, but I think for a medium duty glove, this is the glove to get. So I think the question is then, do I need leather gloves? In reality, you don't. You can actually use just your bare hand if you're using it for practice, right? So if you are budget-minded, you can just go get any sort of glove just to keep your hands comfortable. If you want to take a step up and you just want gloves for practices and something that looks good, something that will keep your hand protected, I recommend those Red Dragons. Um, they're cost-effective and they, if they last as long as my other leather gloves, I mean they can last you for years if you are easy on them. But if you're budget-minded and you want something that you can take to the next level, and you want you don't want to have you don't want to be like me and have like four sets of gloves just for fun and you want a long sword glove so you'll buy your spets heavies your five finger sparring gloves anything from neiman for heavy sparring and you want something that will basically do everything else that is not heavy sparring this would be my recommended glove the fingertips are cheap wherever you can buy these gloves from whether it's purple heart armory which is where i got these from which is woodenswords.com Black Armory, which has those Dohema gloves I showed you guys, um, also sells these. 
All those places all sell the Spez finger fingertips. And if you buy those fingertips and you get a glove like this, you now have a glove that you can use for practice if you really wanted to, and you can use for sparring up to about medium speeds um, without too much worry about your hands. So this would be the glove to go with if you really don't want to buy any other glove other than a real heavy set of gloves. All right, thanks everyone for watching. Um, so if you are in the market for HEMA gloves and leather gloves in particular, I hope this video was helpful. Um, please like and subscribe. Um, I do want to try to grow this channel, um, make it something special in the future. And um, if you are looking for glove, leather gloves, I think these are sort of the two directions to go. The Red Dragon and I really don't know who makes these. And I was trying to look it up online. I just can find everywhere that sells them, like Purple Heart Armory, uh, windsword.com that I got this from, Black Armory, which I got my other gloves from, carry this. I think even Spez carries this. Like, this glove's all over the place. Um, so you should be able to find it anywhere. And the finger caps, anywhere where you can buy these, you can actually buy the finger caps as well. So thanks for watching again. I hope this was helpful, and um, have a good day or evening. Bye.